Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Thank you for being here tonight on the January 15th meeting of our Monroe City Council. Um, before we get started, I'll wait for Patrick to have a seat. Uh, Mr. Bra Mr. Larry Bradley is going to say the blessing for us. Father, we're thankful tonight for this opportunity to gather here to do the work of the city. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us and guide us in everything that we do. We're thankful for the citizens that are here tonight and their reasons for being here and their, their interest in what's going on with the city, and we're just thankful for all of them. Lord, we thank you for all the citizens of Monroe and the way they help us as we move forward the city. Again, thank you for letting us be here and guide us in all that we do, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Bradley. <clears throat> Looking around, roll call, all members are, of the council are present. I uh, need to move to the approval of the agenda, please. Could I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Ross Bradley. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Edcock. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Agenda is approved. <clears throat> Moving to the approval of the consent agenda. Uh, items we discussed last week at our work session. Um, I think everything is complete here. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Little? <laughs> Second. Second by Mr. Adcock. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion carries. And before I get to our public presentation, I do want to um, acknowledge Jenna Lowe. You know, stand for us, please. Jen is a George Walton Academy student. They are on their uh, winter uh, mini mester. I think she has three weeks of uh, having the opportunity to shadow David Clemens and Andrew Kennison and the team from the Walton Tribune. Jen, we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Um, next, moving to Angie Putman from the YMCA. Told her she has five and a half minutes, and Andrea Hill is going to follow that up for about a minute and a half, so we'll go for a total of seven, but uh, please proceed, Angie. Okay, um, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. And I met with John last week. He came and looked at the Brad Aikens YMCA, and he said, would you mind coming and speaking to the council? I said, sure, I'd be glad to. And I was thinking I had more like 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to talk really fast. I'll try to do it. I will do it. We listen fast. Um, but thank you all for having me. And if you're on, um, a couple of years ago, we reformed our committee. Um, and if you're on our committee, could you stand up? For the YMCA. We have several committee members that came with us and they're um, meeting and working hard to try to make this why happen. So thank you all for being here. Um, and thank you all for allowing me to be here. So I've worked for the YMCA for over 20 years. I'm from Bainbridge, Georgia. I got my exercise science degree and started working for the Y and I have loved it for, the, for 20 years. I have loved what I do. I help people walk again move again, people with knee replacements, shoulder replacements, people with all kind of health issues, diabetes, um, people that have had cancer, people that have had heart surgery. Everybody benefits from the why, the young, the old, everyone. Kids learn to swim. We teach over a 1,000 kids a year how to swim. Kids learn to shoot their first basketball hoop. Kids play soccer. Kids, we keep kids after school. We have about 300 kids after school. Um, we also have about 200 kids in day camp. Um, we partner with the Boys and Girls Club. Some of them come over and we do free swim lessons for the Boys and Girls Club. We do free, free swim lessons for our summer camp kids, for our after school kids. Um, and we have about 3,000 senior citizens. At the Brad Aikens Y, we have about 8,000 members. And at the YMCA of, um, YMCA of Georgia's Piedmont is two Ys. It's the Brad Aikens Y and the Bell Family YMCA in Hartwell, Georgia. So all together, we have about 10,000 members. So we really think if we built a Y here in Walton County, we would have between seven and 8,000 members. So you would serve a lot of people. Um, y'all all, um, each of y'all up front have one of these case for supports. Y'all can keep this. So if you could just look over that, give it to friends. Um, on here at the bottom, it just says, you know, we have the ability to do um, water safety for children in Walton County. So we could do probably 1,000 kids a year water safety and swim lessons. Um, we can also provide a safe place for adults and kids and families to come. Um, we can also do our summer learning loss with our day camp kids so they can you know, keep that reading going all summer long. Um, we can also help um, combat obesity, diabetes, and chronic diseases um, through exercise. Um, a lot of the seniors come there to get in the pool to do warm water therapy. 
Um, we do aqua exercise and do a lot, a lot of rehab classes in our pool. Um, and a pool is what, y'all have, I think, a small pool here, but you don't have a, really a big enough pool for everybody to be able to utilize it. Um, so the pool is, was the biggest thing on the community needs assessment that everybody wanted in Monroe. Um, also, I, I think I said we have about over 12,000 participants, but about 10,000 members. Um, about 25% of our members are on financial assistance. So if they can't afford to pay the full rate, they fill out a scholarship that's based on income. So we do a lot of kids, a lot of families um, scholarship. Um, we have grandparents raising their grandkids. We have foster kids. We have a lot of kids that get financial assistance to be able to come to the Y. So that's what makes us different than any other health club or other clubs is we provide that financial assistance. And we provide over $750,000 a year in financial subsidies and, and assistance. The high school comes. They use our swim team for our, their swim. They use our pool for their swim team. Um, they also use the cross country. Um, they use our pool as well. Special needs kids use our pool. Um, so we do a lot for the community, have a lot of kids in day camp. Um, we also have a food bank, and um, we ha they have Northeast Georgia Food Bank, but we do an additional food bank at the Y where we feed 50 families every month. Um, if you'll look on this page right here, the next to the last page, a great story is Al Stevens. He's from Monroe. He came into the YMCA in a wheelchair. He could not walk. He could only stand up for about two or three minutes. And, um, he started working out on the weights, and then we got him on the treadmill, and we held him, and we let him walk, and he walked up to five minutes. He had a spinal cord stroke. The doctor said, you may never walk again. Um, he went to the Shepherd Center, and they released him and said, you may not ever get any better. Um, but we at the Y, we, it's a challenge for us. We like to help people. So we had him on the treadmill. He walked five minutes. Then he came back and walked 10 minutes. Then he came back and walked 15 minutes, and then he came back three weeks later and walked about 30, and then about a month later, we got him up to 35 minutes. And it took a couple of months, but we got him walking 90 minutes. And about three months after that, or four months, he, he started coming in without his wheelchair. So he started walking in with a walker, and now he walks with a cane. So he said, Angie, the why has really changed my life and saved my life. He said, I really appreciate what y'all have done. We do that for people all the time. We help people and just because we love people, and that's what we do. Um, the lady behind Al is a single-parent grandmother. Um, her mom did not want her. Her dad was in jail, so the grandmother was taking care of her. The grandmother came in in tears and said, I need someplace safe for my granddaughter to go because I have to get a job so I can support her. And I said, or the front desk said, fill out a scholarship. So she filled out a scholarship, and she still couldn't afford it. So we just scholarshiped her 100%. And her granddaughter came for two years for free to summer camp, to after school. And she really benefited and flourished. And now she's come out of her shell. She loves the why. And we hope and her little granddaughter will be a counselor one day. But that little girl has really thrived. And she didn't want her in the, it was a, it was not a safe neighborhood, so she wanted her at the why. Um, and then the lady at the bottom, she had knee replacement. The Y helped her to be able to walk again. Then an 18-wheeler hit her, and you can read her story. She was in a nursing home, but now she's walking again, and she's at the Y. So we have thousands and thousands of, of people who come to the Y and benefit from the Y, from the swim team, from the swim lessons, to the basketball, to the exercise classes, to senior citizen classes, silver sneakers, um, the outdoor pool. They do outdoor aqua exercise during the summer, um, and that's... Everybody that comes loves the Y and they have a great time. So we really think your community could benefit from a YMCA. Um, we do have 15 acres of land that has already been donated by Mr. Rao, and he has also promised another 15, so we'll have 30 acres right across from the high school. So we already have the land. If you look at this right here, the Walton County Grow Development helped us develop this, um, and they, they build about 48 YMCAs a year. Um, and there's a critical pathway plan that we follow. So we followed the plan. We did the research, the community needs research. Um, we did a feasibility study. We did um, a board, re board readiness survey, and we did all those surveys. And all the research shows that, um, that y'all are ready and the people want a YMCA here in Walton County. Um, if you look on... In your feasibility study uh, yeah. and, and the, the folks who voted who wanted the pool... How many respondents did you have? Oh, uh, the feasibility study, and it's on here too. Um, it's, it's near the end, but um, about 
six, 500, 499, 599, I think it was 600 people responded to that survey. And the YMCA said that was one of the best surveys they've seen in two years. So, and they build 40 something lives a year. Um, they said in here in Walton County was one of the best surveys they had seen. Um, so what we want is to do an expansive lobby, a social lounge, a teaching kitchen where we can teach kids and, and adults how to eat healthy, um, a multi-purpose community room, child watch area so moms can come and leave their kids for up to two hours while they work out. Um, an aquatic center, that's the number one thing in the community research that they wanted was that, that pool, that indoor heated pool. And we keep the pool around 85 degrees so it's good for everyone, especially if you have arthritis and you have had, had knee replacement and you get in there or shoulder surgery or, or heart, heart problems, whatever, you can get in the pool. Two minutes, okay. Um, wellness center, aquatic center, adult wall locker rooms. This is the land and it's right here across from the high school. If y'all wanna look on there on page 13, um, we already have the land. This is what the potential Y could look like. We'll have to, of course, you know, hire our own architects and all, but it will be a beautiful YMCA. Um, we are thinking we need at least 30,000 square feet. Um, and y'all can look through the pictures on here. They grow development. They think that 30,000 square foot could be around 11 million. I think that's a little high. We're hoping maybe around 10 million. If we do a 35,000 square foot wide, it'd be around 13 million. And a 42,000 square foot wide would be around 15 million. Um, so those are the soft and hard costs included. And if you look through, there's some beautiful pictures of what the, the Y could potentially look, back, look like, and I think it could really benefit your community. Um, and then y'all can look through the community needs assessment. Um, we, we do think we could potentially have 2,500 units. Um, we might not start with that. We might start with 800 units or 1,000, but it could, it could get up to 2,500 units, um, which is probably about seven or 8,000 members. Um, and then on the last thing, um, feasibility study, if y'all want to look at that, I mean, we think they, they think that enough people would come. It's 2,500 units, so, um, and they, to, a Y to sustain itself, they recommend 2,200, but we have Ys that do 1,800 and 1,500 that are, are, that are perfectly fine. So um, a YMCA would greatly benefit your community. Um, it's a great place. I love the Y. And if y'all have any questions, um, let me know, but it could be, y'all have the potential to have a beautiful YMCA in Walton County, um, and we have the land. And Andrea wants to say something really quick about prior, some statistics. Prior to, prior to Dr. Hill coming <laughs> forward, does anybody have any questions or comments for Ms. Putman? I've got one question. Just once you get past the building program, mm -hmm. uh, normal operating, how is it funded? Um, uh, most of the Y is funded through membership. Um, again, yeah. I, we have um, almost 8,000 members. And so, mo our income, our sixty-five percent of our income is membership. Another thirty is programs, and another ten is um, is found is grants, grants and donations. So we do an annual campaign to raise money for scholarships. So we raise about one hundred fifty thousand at the Brad Aikens Y every year, just for scholarships. So, are there any other questions, comments? If you would, please, uh, feel free to reach out to Ms. Putman. She'll be more than happy to take you through the, the Brad Aikens Y. Very, very nice. What I would expect here would be very similar. And play a little musical chairs. You can have a seat, and you can come talk. Angie had to speed through that. Um, <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm Dr. Andrea Hill. Um, I'm the owner of Monroe Pediatrics. We've um, been in Monroe and Walton County since 2002. Um, a lot of y'all know me or have heard of me. Um, I'm pretty much an expert on what we don't have for kids in this county and what we need. My practice sees about 50% of the kids in this county. So um, the biggest issue that I'm concerned about is the rising obesity problem in America and Walton County is about in line with um, the state of Georgia. And I, I'm sad to say, and it frustrates me at work that in the last 15 years, out of thousands and thousands of kids who I and the other providers in my practice have talked to, have scheduled follow-ups, have worked on obesity with, I've probably only had five actually lose weight and keep it off. Um, it's a horrible statistic. And one of the biggest problems is not just the diet that the YMCA um, wants to help with teaching people, but the kids around here don't have places to work out. 
They don't have affordable places to work out with their families because an obese child quite often has an obese parent and habits are learned from your parents. Um, so I think that's one of the great things about the YMCA a few years ago. I saw Lee Rowell and I was like, what's going on with the YMCA project? We really need this in our county. And that kind of triggered um, ramping things up again. The YMCA is very rigorous in their requirements. So we have gone through all these studies that Angie listed off, but it's because the YMCA doesn't want to start anything that fails and waste any of our money. So um, the feasibility studies are completely uh, based on, you know, reports that we paid for and they extrapolated from statistics and we feel like there's a very firm foundation for it. We've had to jump through a lot of hoops to get to this point and we're ready to start doing the fundraising and really get it built. I think Angie talked about all the um, people who it benefits, all the free people who come, but um, one of the biggest points is when you asked about how it's funded is the membership, is that the membership is affordable. Um, there is a membership fee, but you don't have to be upper middle class um, or even middle class to afford it. And so it's really available to the biggest percent of our county. Um, and I think without it, we're not gonna make much progress with obesity in Walton County. There are a lot of other statistics out there. Um, you know, the drowning deaths. I actually, you know, I raised a daughter in this county. She's 24 now, shocks me. But but I uh, had to drive to UGA and back every day to take her to swim practice. My child in middle school, high school, wasn't getting home until late at night because there was no place for swim team here. Not just that, but the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends all children learn to swim at four or five years old. It's a safety issue. We have no good place to do it in this county. And um, that's just you know, sad for all of our kids. So while the Y is for adults and children um, and adults generate a lot of the business and the revenue, the kids in our county become the adults and the kids are the ones who I think are gonna benefit tremendously and that's why I'm helping out with it. So um, thanks for listening to me and I kept it short. Right? Well, you did and thank you. And do we have any questions for Dr. Hill? think we can all, all agree. Right. We can all agree. It's that great. With our I issues, mean, I so. feel silly having to advertise for the Y because it's such a great thing, but definitely <coughs> go to Brad Aiken's Y and take a look at it and just visualize that in our county and y'all will just be, you'll, you'll just be so excited about the idea. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for coming in. I know you need these back. Um, can I borrow them? Lee quickly put hers back on the counter. <laughs> I'll be happy to um, let you keep it and you can give it back to John. He can give it to me if you want. But I'm, I want to hold one or two of these okay. so you can yeah, feel free to time. come by my office and, and okay. spend more time. I, I, I got you. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you involved in the Y, I appreciate your, your taking the time out of your schedules to come tonight. Um, I think, it, I think we, we all know that it's, that it's important for the long-term uh, growth of, of Monroe and the long-term success of the people who live here. So I really appreciate your, your taking your time. Thank you. And you're not required to stay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that we had anybody signed up for public comments tonight. I did not have a sheet, no. so it appears we had none. Um, moving to old business for the rezone at 1600 East Church Street, Mr. Stone. Yes, uh, that has been requested by uh, the uh, representative to be tabled. They're going to need additional time to provide uh, what we had requested as far as elevations and drawings and uh, the clearance of how they're going to do the covenants. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, moving, moving to new business. First reading of the historic preservation. We'll have to uh, entertain a motion to table the. Oh, an internet. I'm sorry. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. We'll Bradley. Until next month. Do I have a second? To table. Till next month. Oh, sir. Next month, Mr. Ross Bradley. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion <coughs> carries. Thank you. New business. First reading of the Historic Preservation Commission membership ordinance amendment. Mr. Rosenthal. Uh, Mayor, this is first reading of the Historic Preservation Ordinance. This is just to bring our ordinance in line with some new DNR regulations that change the uh, 
terms of the serving members doesn't change the makeup of the members <coughs> in any way at this time. This is an ordinance to amend Chapter 54, Article 2, Section 5438 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Monroe, Georgia, regarding the City's Historic Preservation Commission membership. The Mayor and the Council of the City of Monroe hereby ordain as follows Article 1, Chapter 54, Article 2, 5438 of the Code of Ordinances is hereby amended by removing Section 5438 and replacing it with the following in lieu thereof. The Historic Preservation Commission shall consist of five members appointed by the Mayor and ratified by the City Council who have demonstrated special interest, experience, or education in history, architecture, or the preservation of historic resources. Members shall sh serve three-year terms. At the expiration of their term, members shall continue to serve until their successor is duly appointed. All members shall reside within the historic preservation jurisdiction of the respective municipality. The historic preservation jurisdiction is defined as the city limits, not the local historic district. In order to achieve staggered terms, initial appointments shall be one member for one year, one member for two years, one member for three years, one member for four years, and one member for five years. Members do not receive a salary. One member may be appointed from the City Council to serve as an ex officio non-voting member. This council member may be appointed annually by the mayor. Article 2, all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith are hereby repealed. Article 3, this ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by the mayor and the council of the City of Monroe, Georgia. This constitutes the first reading, Mayor. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Mr. Rosenthal? Good question. Does the residence requirement affect any of the current members? Uh, it does not. Uh, it um, well, Mr. Kelly. I hang on a minute. Yeah, that's going to be a question I'm going to defer to Mr. Kelly. The red. I apologize. I thought your question was the the time. I don't know the answer to that. Yes, sir, Mr. Bradley. Um, the way the DNR told us to to play this out is to allow current serving members to serve out their entire term, and that they'd be staggered as they were reappointed. Um, we do have one non-resident on the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Hopefully they'll move in to town before, uh, before her term's up because she's a great member. Um, but yes, she would be affected by that resolution and it's a requirement of the model ordinance. She is a great member and that's the reason I asked the question if there's a way around that. I, I think the residence issue is one of those that has been suggested by DNR so that we're complying with sort of state overarching uh, issues. So I don't know that we could make that change, but we could follow the mandate or the recommendation. We could allow them to serve out that term. Are there any other questions or comments? And, and just to follow up, we've seen that same issue further on, I think, DDA membership changes. It's, it's a moving trend to get it defined to the municipal jurisdiction that we're controlling it used to be a little more broad based and they're limiting and constricting it to with essentially citizens of the city. Thank you. That was the first reading uh, resolution open records officer, Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you, mayor. This is a resolution that we have to do every year uh, for our open records act compliance is resolution of the city council, of city of Georgia for the purpose of naming an open records of, records officer and alternate open records officer and for other purposes, whereas the provisions of the Georgia Open Records Act uh, were amended by the action of the Georgia legislature during 2012 session, and whereas one of the changes the act allows for the appointment of an open records officer to whom all requests for records must be made, and whereas a further change of the act provides that a municipal corporation may require all requests made under the act to be made in writing, and whereas the act further provides for the notice of such change, now therefore pursuant to provisions of the act, the city council of the city of Monroe, the governing body of the city of Monroe, does here by resolve as follows. Number one, the city administrator is designated as the open records officer and the city clerk is designated as the alternate open records officer to act in the absence of the city administrator, both to act for the city of Monroe, Georgia and all of its related and subsidiary entities as defined in the act. Sub two, all requests for records made under the act directed to the city of Monroe shall be made in writing to the open records officer or in his absence to the alternate records officer. The open records officer is directed to cause all city of Monroe websites to prominently display this designation and requirement. The open records officer is directed to notify the Walton Tribune as the county's legal organ and any other media regularly covering the city of Monroe matters of the content of this resolution. The open records officer is directed to notify city of Monroe employees and volunteers that any request made under the act shall be directed to the open records officer or in his absence to the alternate records officer. And this action shall be effective immediately upon the notifications of the media and changes to the websites having been made. So resolved this 15th day of January 2019. That is a resolution, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Rosenthal? Any comments? <laughs> if not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ms. Malcolm. Do you have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Little. 
Was that correct, Nathan? That's right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. <coughs> Motion carries. Moving uh, point number three, approval of the election qualifying fees. Mr. Probst. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have before your request to approve the 2019 election qualifying fees. Um, this will apply to districts one, two, four, five, and seven for the upcoming general election. Uh, we'll set those fees at $180. Um, be happy to take any questions on these. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, I'll entertain a motion, please, to approve the qualifying fees for the 2019 election as specified by Mr. Probst in the Georgia Code. Does this also include setting the dates for qualifying? It's just the fees. Does that need to be well, a part of the motion, I guess, is my question. This is the county set the date. County will set the date, but this is just to set our own city of Monroe qualifying fees for this election. It specifies the qualifying dates in here as Correct. well. So um, Monday, August 26th um, at 8.30 a.m., that's the beginning, and it shall end Friday, August 30th, uh, 2019 at 4.30 p.m. But before we go any further, any other comments? We are only approving the qualifying fees, correct? Well, I don't want to make a motion to approve the wrong thing. Well, the qualifying dates are going to be set by statute. We have entered into an intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Elections, uh, so it is for them to call the election and to control the structure, which would include the qualifying period. Um, I, I don't think that any action that you took could modify or change that. Uh, We're just approving the fees. Uh, I'd have to look into it, but I'm quite certain that the qualifying period is going to be mandated by Georgia law and further controlled not by this council, but instead by the Board of Elections. Okay. Uh, because y'all have in previous dates, you know, turned that over to them uh, under state authority to allow them to man, uh, to uh, manage and run our elections, our municipal elections. Okay. So I don't think anything you did would change that. The attached notice references that uh, with the Board of Elections as well. Okay. So I'll entertain, entertain a motion to approve the qualifying fees. Move to approve. Mr. Dickinson, with a motion, do I hear a second? Second. Second. Ross Bradley? Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Resolution for authorizing the execution of the intergovernmental inter agreement with URA, Mr. Rosenthal. Uh, before this one, I do know plenty about because we've been working on it for a minute, but uh, let me defer to Mr. Logan since he has been running point on this and this is his brilliant brainchild. And also Andrew Tritt with Stiefel is here tonight, our placement agent that can also speak to the uh, specifics of the finances but this is a legal document that allows us to take the next step towards financing the police department renovation. But I'll uh, turn this over to Logan for the specifics. Right, so before we get into the authorization of the resolution, uh, some additional background for the public here, and I'm pretty sure everybody here is up to speed. Um, essentially, we, um, we're trying to finance the renovation of the Walton Plaza um, area into the new police station and municipal court complex. In order to do that, we needed to work with a new uh, urban redevelopment agency, which is now vested um, with the same members of the DDA. Um, it's kind of a, a tool we use to, to get really good uh, financing mechanisms in place. Um, and in order to do this, we're going to be issuing uh, private placement bonds of about $3.6 million dollars um, and we've got a really good interest rate. I'm going to ask Andrew Tritt to speak on that in a moment. Um, but this will allow us to uh, further our redevelopment plan that was put in place over 10 years ago. So it's, it's a great move for the city to finally be able to um, execute a lot of these, these projects that we want to do. And this is a big one for us. And so in the background, we'll then be selling... Um, 
the existing police station after we get moved over, and that will then help finance the payback of this loan here or these bonds. Um, if you have any questions on that, feel free or any other comments. I'll be happy to entertain those. Uh, if not, I'll ask Andrew to come up and kind of give us a rundown of how we went about this process. Um, it ended up being extremely beneficial um, in, in the money play world. Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, my name's Andrew Tritt. I'm with Stiefel Nicholas. I served as placement agent to the city on this transaction. Um, to let you know, this is approximately a 10-year bond. Uh, the principal repayment begins in about 21 months from now. Uh, this is a single instrument bond, which means there's one purchaser. Uh, we, sent, we sent effectively a proposal to 18 different institutions. Those were uh, national banks, super regional banks, and local banks. Um, we got back out of those 18, five proposals. And those proposals had interest rates that ranged from a 2.46% all the way to 3.34%. Those are tax-exempt interest rates. Um, the most advantageous interest rate that after discussing this with Logan was the interest rate of a 2.46%. That's with J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, that bond, um, again, with that interest rate, can then be reinvested uh, through the state treasurer's office at a rate of a 2.35%. So there's about 10, 11 basis points of difference there from when we close this on February 12th, and as you're drawing down the money, you're effectively earning the same that you're paying. So it's a neutral amount, and we were really thrilled to have that. Um, all that to say, uh, we were extremely pleased uh, with the results. This met our expectations going into it, <clears throat> the number of bidders, um, and um, just very happy with the outcome, but would certainly be more than happy to answer any questions you all might have. Are there any questions or comments for Mr. Trutt? We know there's a lot of work that you've been putting forth and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Um, hearing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion, please. Move to adopt the resolution. A move to adopt by Mr. Dickinson. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Edcock. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. <laughs> Motion carries. Mayor, before we move on, just because uh, we have a lot of signatures to get, if you just make sure not get lost tonight, Mayor, uh, before you leave, because I have a lot of documents. We will be closing this February the 12th. This will fund February the 12th, so uh, Logan and the police department will be able to move forward post-haste after that. I won't leave until you finish with me. Thank you very much. Um, moving to point number six, the development agreement, Stone Creek subdivision, Mr. Rosenthal. Um, I will give an overview of this and then defer to Daryl or Pat if they want to um, provide any additional background. Uh, but Stone Creek, um, uh, Expo Homes, Mr. Dixon, we've been working with them. Ms. Gray <coughs> has been uh, assisting Mr. Dixon. And essentially, this development agreement will allow Mr. Dixon to proceed forward with phase one of his project um, and allow you all to then accept the final plat in the next action item. Uh, the short version of this, I'll explain it. And um, apologies that this was not in your electronic packet. I believe you have a paper version of it. But essentially, the development agreement requires Mr. Dixon to do certain things in exchange for the city going ahead and accepting the roads and the public right-of-way on phase one. Um, we do have a, a little bit more um, tweaking of that agreement, so we'd ask that the approval <coughs> of the agreement be subject to uh, final review and approval by our office. But essentially, Mr. Dixon's company will post performance bonds and maintenance bonds for the um, uh, infrastructure of the roads, uh, and then the agreement also will outline that there will be no COs issued on any of the homes in the neighborhood except for one, because he has one under contract that needs to be built and sold here pretty quickly until the entire amenities package is installed. Um, so there's 40 lots in phase one. 
49 lots in phase one. So the terms of this agreement will be such that one house can have a CO issued on it, and other than that one home, no other COs can issue. He can pull building permits to begin them, but no other COs can issue essentially until all of this infrastructure is finished and the entire amenities package that was one of your conditions of zoning back earlier this year when you passed it are fully installed and finished out and built. So uh, from our perspective, the agreement is almost there. We just have a few more edits to make uh, at their request, and we've been working diligently with uh, Mr. Dixon's legal counsel and with code office, and we think that we are right where we need to be such that y'all can approve this development agreement subject to our final review and approval, and then that will allow you to accept the final plat uh, subject to a couple of other comments in action item number seven under new business. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and also Mr. Dixon is here, and Ms. Gray is here as well, uh, if there's any specific questions for them. Any questions or comments? I, I guess I have a question or a comment, particularly to Mr. Dixon and Ms. Malcolm, because they have been so well of getting into the details of things. Without this being shown to us in advance, do you guys feel comfortable with what's here? I mean, I don't think any of us got a chance to read this. Anyone? I'm okay with it. Okay. I, the, the only question I had, and I'm thinking that's in the second phase, we do have secondary access to Good Hope Road in the next phase. Is that correct? Or do we have one access point of ingress, egress? Okay. Okay. There's only one entrance to this subdivision. Right. Right. Okay, any other, other comments or questions? Can I hear a motion, please? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Garrett. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Ms. Malcolm. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. I skipped over the downtown green pre remediation environmental sampling. Uh, Got a lot of arrows on my notes here. So, uh, Mr. Probst, go to back to number five, yeah, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, before you is uh, an agreement with uh, ERS. They've been handling the uh, sampling and remediation for the downtown green property that we acquired uh, earlier this year. And we've been asked by EPD to go back and do some <coughs> top layer sampling and about three areas just to satisfy some additional requirements to help us get it into the brownfield program and the total we're asking for here is eleven thousand five hundred dollars to date the city has spent fifty thousand and one dollars on all the sampling and the reporting and, and all that goes with it in order to get that um that pre-lol letter um and to get it uh, ready for the the brownfield program um, it, as it stands now, um, it's kind of coming in right in, uh, as our expectations were. You know, by the time we finish out the full remediation process, it's probably going to be somewhere in that one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range. Um, that's after we remove dirt and, and refill. So right now, just to keep the ball rolling, we're asking for eleven thousand five hundred dollars in additional sampling and reporting costs. And they can start that work tomorrow. By the way, are there any questions for Mr. Probst? Just how soon do you think we'll hear back? How long does it usually take? That's a great question. Um, we're keeping the fire lit under them right now. So as fast as we can. Um, okay. and, and these guys have been working really well, maintaining contact with EPD um, weekly, if not daily sometimes, if it's something of vital importance. So, so far, it's going pretty well. Anything else? Do I hear a motion, please? Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Dickinson. Second by Mr. Ross Bradley. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. So now, back to Stone Creek subdivision for the final plat. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal. 
<laughs> yes, Mayor, this is final plot approval for phase one of Stone Creek, which is the 49 lots. You had that before you. I do know that utility department has noted um, that there may be some additional signature lines required on the front of the plat, um, but um, we'll get all those uh, cleaned up in accordance with their specs. This will allow the, this will be the acceptance of the right of ways of all the way down to the temporary cul-de-sac, which is directly next to the uh, stormwater pond uh, on this um, phase one of Stone Creek subdivision out there off of Church Street. Be happy to answer any questions. And again, Mr. Dixon and his counselor are here. Are there any questions or comments? So it came to be 125 lots, right? Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Crawford. Any discussion? I do have a question. Um, I see where you have the pool area, but I don't see the playground you propose. Yeah. In that area, in that same, okay. Are you good? I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> I have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any additional discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Um, it was a pretty quick meeting. I appreciate uh, all of your attention. Um, I need a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Ross Bradley. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>